It's great to have you on this talk today, um, Bruce. I mean, I've been wanting to get you on this webinar for a while now and share awesome. your story with, uh, with a lot of prospective student athletes and academies that we work with. And, um, you know, before we get into Bucknell, how did you get into tennis coaching yourself? You know, it's funny because uh, when I uh, was, in, when in, was in college, I did an internship at a, a marketing company in Philadelphia that I ended up after graduating, I worked there and kind of started the, the ground floor and became director of marketing, then a VP, then became a partner and then bought out my partner uh, yeah. in 2007, sold the company um, and kind of retired. Uh, and then my old tennis coach became the athletic director of my university uh, and they built a brand new facility and he knew I was kind of puttering around playing and things like that and said, Hey, do you want to come coach tennis and use your, your, your marketing sales background and your tennis? So I got in uh, 2010 and have been doing it ever since. So, and you've coached at some pretty amazing programs. I mean, you, you spent some time at Delaware and then you yes. went to North Carolina. How was that? How was that transition obviously going from Delaware to North Carolina? No, it's definitely, you know, it's different. And it's funny, it's school to school, but there's such a, you know, it's such a different feel like, um, like Delaware, you had classes of, you know, six or 700 students for some of your intro uh, courses in North Carolina that are even bigger. And then you circle back and you come to Bucknell and it's, it's such a smaller learning environment and, and things like that. So there's such a difference between schools, um, size and location and things like that. So, uh, you know, it, it's funny because, um, you know, when I got the Bucknell, it was just a smaller class sizes and small, kind of the feel I was more accustomed to as a, as a student athlete from my days. So, yeah. And I mean, obviously, as a Division One college coach, you've done very well, but you've also had the experience of working at other divisions, right? You went to yeah. a Division Two program too. Did you have a stint at Longwood University? I did. I started at Division Three and Division Two and then Division One. So kind of kind of touched them all. So, yeah. Aren't we lucky to have you on this call today? Because, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's so many athletes that are not sure where they want to go. And there's so many different programs out there. And, yes. um, you know, what, what are your thoughts on the different divisions and your take from a tennis perspective? You know, and I, and I definitely think, I mean, there's definitely a difference. I mean, the biggest difference between, uh, you know, like one and three uh, is just the amount of time you're on court and not, not, you know, I think the difference is what, four hours a week or whatever, but it's the season's much longer. Like division one, you know, it goes from first day of class to the middle of November, and then you start back up again in January. So it's pretty much an all year round training where division three, you definitely have, you know, a six, five or six week fall and, and you kind of put the rackets away or whatever and then you pick it back up maybe february so it's a there's longer breaks um uh where the division one's more year round and then division two is kind of in between that um with a you know for whatever reason a more strong almost a stronger emphasis in the fall um yep. where our fall in division one is kind of you know tournaments and individual and things like that so there's definitely um definitely three different divisions. I mean, similarities, but there's, there's a difference between all three of them. And I, and I think, you know, you talk to kids, there's a good fit for everybody out there. So, yeah. Right. It's trying to find the right fit. You know, some yes. people might not like a, a lecture room of 600 people. So <laughs> exactly. But then some people want that. So, yeah, totally. So Bucknell, obviously very well known for academics. It's very, very strong in academics. Um, you know, what kind of uh, strengths do you have there as, from a tennis perspective? You know, it's um, obviously, you, although we have one player currently playing professionally, for the most part, my guys are realistic knowing that this they're coming here, uh, obviously, to get a great education. And, and then whether they go to a master's program or right into the professional world, I think they know this is probably the highest level of tennis they're going to be playing at. Um, so, um, you know, I, and I think, uh, you know, we still – um, you know, our, our conference is strong. It's, it's more academically centric and focused, but we still play Michigan state and Penn state and Miami. So we'll still play some of the, some of the big boys. Um, but we know, I think my, my guys know that when they, you know, when they graduate, they're going to, you know, go into the professional world and things like that. So. And so Bucknell being a very strong academic university, the boys there must have pretty, uh, set career paths for them. They know what they want to do. You know, what kind of um, case studies can you share with athletes that have come into your program that have gone on and worked for big companies? Yeah, and that's the that's the neat thing about a, a school like Bucknell and a lot of other schools. So, well, we have a program 
unique to our to just men's tennis. So between junior and senior year, what I do is uh, I'll connect my play, my student athlete with a former player. So like last last summer, this summer is unique, but the previous summer I had two right. rising seniors. Uh, one did an internship with a guy in, in, in North Jersey, but he dealt with the real estate in Manhattan in, in New York City. Um, and then another one did, it was an, did a finance major who, did, who worked on Wall Street with one of my former players. So I'll set up my former players or my current players with a former player, which my former players love because they're getting a hitting partner after work every day. But obviously my current players get the experience and the connections and things like that. So we, we try to tie in, we do a, a couple of alumni events a year um, to just make that connection between a former player with a current player, because in a lot of ways, former players were in their shoes, whether it was five, 10, 15 years ago. So they can kind of show that, you know, shed some light on their experiences, you know, during their senior year and after college, which I think is beneficial. So. For sure. And for those that are watching this, that's what I love about Coach Myers is that he's big on life after college. And there's some pro there's some college programs that I won't name that are kind of focused on the athlete just being there and that's it and performance. And that it's all based on like them winning matches where you are like trying to set them up themselves up for the next part of their life, which is amazing. Um, in terms of the facilities that athletes get access to for people that have never been to Bucknell or don't know much about the program that are quite young listening to this can you please paint a clear image of what it's like over there and, and that's the, the neat thing because you know now that uh, what June 1st I guess they lifted the dead period so now you're getting kids flocking to campus and you know even though we're not a, you know we're not Miami or Penn State or anything like that it, it's neat because you know, we've got 10 outdoor courts on campus we've got three indoor courts on campus we've got a, a six court indoor facility that's like a 10 minute drive off campus that we use but we have you know you have sports medicine you have your physio you have your your trainer that, that works with the program you've got uh you know the neat thing the weight room just for student athletes for strength and conditioning but we've also got access we have a, a sports psychologist on staff so wow. we'll have we meet with them weekly and then set up individual meetings but the biggest thing they've done a really good job in kind of expanding the last couple of years is nutrition. So okay. we have, we have a place on campus that's called bison fuel. That's for student athletes. So pretty much from 11 to five, they did a couple studies a couple of years ago that the problem was students would go right from class. Maybe they had back-to-back -back classes and come to practice and the energy level was low. So now uh, all the student athletes had access. I think it's like 11 to five every day where they can go get you know, sandwiches, bars, chocolate milk, power, you know, just make sure when you go to practice, you want to have that, I mean, you give it your 90 minutes or whatever and have energy and, and things like that. So they've really expanded that program on campus and that's been great for the guys. So that's fantastic. And as a, as a freshman coming to university, they're not used to seeing the amazing resources that colleges have. And it's like a kid in a candy store. They see all yeah. these amazing things. Yes. And sometimes when athletes go to a cafeteria, they'll be like, pizzas and all that sort of food that they can get access to with the tennis guys that that are part of your program do they get like sort of pushed in the right direction by a nutritionist as well outside of this training facility yeah and it's neat so we'll meet with the nutritionist i mean within the first week we have a sit down meeting and she kind of lays it out with what we should do her the biggest benefit to her for the that part for the program is actually in the spring i think because she'll lay out like, hey, you guys are traveling to, to Boston this week. Here's where you guys are eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Here's, here's what I expect you to eat. So she'll kind of map it out for us, which actually takes a little bit off my plate because she's yeah. saying, here's where you're going to go eat and here's what I expect. And, you know, she works with some of the, the kids that have special dietary needs. And, and, you know, and I think we're lucky for the most part because, I mean, tennis players burn so much. It's part of the issue with some of the guys is, is getting enough calories to make sure they, they, they have that energy uh, for the, you know, the third match in three days and things like that. So that's, that's the biggest thing is making sure they're, they're fueling their bodies the right way to, to extend versus petering out in the third set. So, and that sounds really good. I mean, it's great for kids to hear that and especially parents to hear that, that there is some like uh, some structure put in place for their, for their nutrition there. And they're going to be keeping in good shape so they can keep yes. those, keep that spot in that tennis team. Now, Athletes wanting to come to Bucknell, obviously, as I know, I've known you now for quite a few years and yes. know, we've had many conversations about the academic side of things. How, how tough is it academically to get into Bucknell? What kind of grades, GPA, SAT do athletes need if they want to consider this as an option? 
Yeah, I mean, it, you, before COVID, it would be, you know, I would say like a three, five and like, it's a little bit major dependent. So if you're, if you're in the engineering, if you're looking for an engineering major, you're going to need a 1300 plus, closer to a 1400 to be considered. Um, the, the management school, which encompasses most of the business is probably like a, you know, a, a high 12 to 13 SAT, 1300 SAT. And then some of the, the arts and sciences, you can probably get a 1200 plus. Um, now with, uh, you know, this is being the second year we're actually test optional, which is unique. Yeah. Um, so now admissions is, is focusing a little bit more on, on class rigor and course rigor. So they'd rather see you get a B in a, in a tough subject than in, in, you know, a bunch of A's in easy subjects. So they want to see you kind of test and push yourself. And I think that's been one of the neat things. I think some of the kids have, have taken a step back with being test optional, which is nice because it, you don't have the pressure of taking the SAT four times to get that number, and, but yeah. it's kind of push yourself academically while you're sitting and, and take some harder classes and don't be afraid to get like I said, a B minus in a, in a, in you know some higher level you know economics class is going to mean more than a, a, an A plus in, in some really easy class. So I, I think I think in a lot of ways it's, it's been beneficial because kids are pushing themselves a little earlier versus trying to you know take the cupcake classes and do well. So right, right. Now that sounds awesome. That's definitely some good information. In terms of what your day looks like, as you said, there are obviously two semesters: the fall and the spring. If athletes are coming there in August, what would a daily routine look like with you? And it's 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 a little. I mean, there's definitely a difference between the fall and the spring. Um, you know, our our week is kind of set up. We'll do we'll do four hours of we call it strength and conditioning, kind of your off court yep. training in the weight room. So it typically that's like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and a Saturday. Um, we have a there's no classes at Bucknell. There's a gap from 4:32 to 6:58 in the afternoon, so that's a pretty standard team practice, usually about 90 minutes. But what we we'll do, especially in the fall, each of the guys will do an hour to an hour and a half daily of private work. So we do Perfect. a lot of one-on-one, which is kind of you know you might not have class on Tuesday, Thursday till one o'clock. So you and I'd get together for an hour, hour and a half, and kind of work on specific aspects of your game, whether it's you know, your second serve to the ad side or something. But I think that's where you make some of the biggest improvements kind of focus on that one-on-one. -on -one. So, yeah. so that's a typical week. And in, in the fall we're playing, what I'll do is we'll play six or seven fall tournaments. I'll take two or three. It will be full squad, but then I'll take four guys to, um, I'll take four guys to the tournament. So I can kind of focus, you know, the big thing for an incoming freshman too is, especially well Americans and internationals you're not used to having a coach sitting on court with you yeah. during a match so it's kind of like it's a it's a feeling out period to see how you I mean you might want to hear feedback after every point or on changeovers yeah. or you might want to hear positive about your game you want, might want to hear negative you might want to hear feedback about your opponent so it's kind of figure out how you like to be coached so when we get to the spring I know you know he only talked to him positively on changeovers and things like that so that's that's important in the fall. You know what I love about college tennis is like athletes want to be involved in that. Tennis can be such a lonely sport, but yes. college makes it such a big team sport. And I guess that's why a lot of people love watching Davis Cup with a coach sitting on the side or the ATP Cup in Australia where yes. the whole team can be sitting there hyping you up. I mean, yes. obviously the Aussies are great to watch, Nick Kyrgios and those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's what I love about college is that everyone's got your back and can give you instructions. And it's really interesting what you said about how athletes relate to different bits of information during a match. That must be, that must be quite a, a, a tricky thing for you as a coach to try and figure out the player, right? Yeah. And it's, and like I said, there's, there, I mean, some people don't want any feedback on their game. They only want you to focus on their opponent. And, and so it, there's definitely a learning curve the first couple of times you sit on court um, to figure out how, how best they like to be coached. And, and then it's also, you know, the, the thing we've added probably, I think three years ago. So we, we videotape, we'll record all of our, our practices, and our matches, but we've, we use an analytics company. So we send away the tape, we get back the analytics and they kind of chunk the match point by point. So I can tell you, that you know you're 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 too open on your backhand, you know. That, but sometimes you have to see that video. To, like, hey, your coach isn't an idiot. He actually knows what he's talking about. So we really started using video to kind of reinforce what I'm saying. And sometimes sometimes people are visual learners. They have to see it for themselves. Like, hey, you know what? You're right. So yeah. I think video analysis is so important, and it's great that a lot of colleges like yourself and coaches are implementing it because 
it's so hard to figure out where you're going wrong unless you see yourself doing it. Yes. And I just spoke to a girl that she is, she would be in her sophomore year in high school in New Zealand. She wants to go to the States for soccer. And she said, I'm starting to film my soccer matches. I want to go to the States. And I said, right, you right. know what you should do? Do a video session a week and just watch your games. I said, you'll learn yeah. so much by it. And I guess that's across all sports as well. That implies in terms of, what you look for in recruits. Now, you mentioned the grades. The grades have to be high. Now, as everyone knows, the UTR system has pretty much dominated the world with recruiting mm-hmm. in terms of, in terms of um, college tennis. And the ITF system is not as strong due to all the tournaments being cancelled. You know, they're starting to get a few more tournaments, but it's not, it's not right there at the moment. What do you look for at the moment, given it's 2021, we're just coming out of a pandemic? What do you sort of look at? You know, I, like you said, academics are first and foremost because, you know, the last thing you want to deal with, you know, if a kid's not doing well academically, it's going to negatively impact his social life and his tennis. So if a kid's doing well in school and, you know, I think we're lucky that tennis and I think golf and swimming, your individual sports by nature, the kids usually get their time management skills down. So obviously you hope that that's in place initially. But I mean, the big thing for a school like Bucknell, you know, we're not Michigan and we're not, you know, Ohio state or anything like that. So we're kind of looking for the kid who, who obviously hasn't peaked yet. Maybe hasn't played 45 ITF tournaments this year. You know, so you're trying to get maybe a raw kid who is maybe plays six, seven, eight for you initially, but by training and you know, in the weight room and, and hitting and training with better players every day, we'll go from seven is freshman year to three is sophomore year. So you're looking for the, I think every coach is looking for the kid who uh, under the right tutelage can, can grow their game and really develop and peak at the right time. So for sure. Well, I can, I can vouch as a, someone that's been working with you for the last two and a half, three years, you know, you've been absolutely amazing. I still want to get you one of my guys, you know, I, please, I've got a few, please. I've got a few guys for next year that I've got my okay. eye on that I'm like, their grades are good. You know, we're going to be good. sending them through to you. So I'll definitely be sending you a, a text message with those guys shortly. But I mean, thank you so much for your time today, coach. Really, really appreciate it. And for those that are watching this, check out their website. Uh, go um, Bucknell Men's Tennis. Mm-hmm. See their roster. See their schedule. Go on YouTube. Check out their campus. It's honestly amazing. Um, Bucknell's very, very strong academically. So if you want to set yourself up for life um, as an academic, definitely consider that program. But I mean, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Coach. My pleasure. We'll talk. Be in touch. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. See you All later. Right, take care. All right. Bye.